Wednesday, May 30th, towards nine o'clock in the morning. We, the judges, repaired to the place of the old market in Rouen. We were assisted by the Reverend's Father in Christ, the Lord's Bishop of Theroux and Noyon, and by a number of other lords, masters, and ecclesiastical personages. Before us was brought the said Joan, in presence of the people assembled in this place in an immense multitude. She was placed upon a scaffold or platform. For her wholesale admonition and for the edification of the whole multitude, a solemn address was made by the renowned doctor, Nicholas Meady, who took for his text those words of the Apostle in the first epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 12, If one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. This address ended, we, the bishop, did once more admonish Joan to look to her salvation, to reflect on her misdeeds, to repent of them, to have a true contrition for them. We exhorted her to believe hereon the opinion of the clergy, of the notable persons who have taught and instructed her on all the treats of her salvation. We did particularly exhort her to believe the good advice of the two venerable Dominicans, who were at that moment beside her, and whom had sent to her to converse with her up to the last moment, and to furnish her in all surety with wholesome admonitions and counsels profitable to her salvation. Afterwards, we, the bishop and vicar aforesaid, having regard to all that has gone before, in which it is shown that this woman had never truly abandoned her errors, her obstinate temerity, nor her unheard-of crimes, that she had even shown the malice of her diabolical obstinacy in this deceitful semblance of contrition, penitence, and amendment, malice rendered still more damnable by perjury of the holy name of God and blasphemy of his ineffable majesty, considering her on all these grounds obstinate, incorrigible, heretic, relapsed into heresy, and altogether unworthy of the grace and of the communion which, by our former sentence, we did mercifully accord to her, all of which, being seen and considered, after mature deliberation and counsel of a great number of doctors, we have at last proceeded to the final sentence on these terms. In the name of the Lord, Amen. At all times when the poisoned virus of heresy attaches itself with persistence to a member of the church and transforms him into a member of Satan, extreme care should be taken to watch that the horrible contagion of this pernicious leprosy do not gain other parts of the mystic body of Christ. The decisions of the Holy Fathers have willed that hardened heretics should be separated from the midst of the just, so that to the great peril of others this homicidal viper should not be warmed in the bosom of the pious Mother Church. It is for this that we, Pierre, by the divine mercy, Bishop of Beauvais, and we, Brother Jean Lemaitre, deputy of the renowned doctor Jean Graveron, inquisitor of the evil of heresy, specially delegated for him by this process, both judges competent in this trial already, by a just judgment, have declared this woman fallen into diverse errors and diverse crimes of schism, idolatry, invocation of demons, and many others. But because the church closes not her bosom to the child who returns to her, We did think that, with a pure spirit and a faith unfeigned, you has put far from thee thy errors and thy crimes, considering that on a certain day you did renounce them and did publicly swear, vow, and promise never to return to thy errors and heresies, to resist all temptations, and to remain faithfully attached to the unity of the Catholic Church and the communion of the Roman Pontiff, as is proved at greater length in a writing signed by your own hand. But after this abjuration of your errors, the author of schism and heresy had arisen in your heart, which he had once more seduced, 
and it became manifest by thy spontaneous confessions and assertions, O oh shame, that as the dog returns again to his vomit, so you have returned to your errors and crimes. And it had been proved to us in a most certain manner that you have renounced thy guilty inventions and thy errors only in a lying manner, not in a sincere and faithful spirit. For these causes, declaring thee fallen again into thy old errors and under the sentence of excommunication which you have formerly incurred, we decree that you art a relapsed heretic. By our present sentence, which, seated in tribunal, we utter and pronounce in this writing, we denounce thee as a rotten member, and that you may not vitiate others as cast out from the unity of the church, separate from her body, abandoned to the secular power, as indeed, by these presents, we do cast thee off, separate, and abandon thee, praying this same secular power, so far as concerns death, and the mutilation of the limbs, to moderate its judgment towards thee, and if true signs of penitence should appear in thee, to permit that the sacrament of penance be administered to thee.